On tonight's CTV News, a prominent property developer is warning businesses will be crippled unless the council acts soon. MPs are concerned Sarah lacks the expertise for the next leg of the recovery and the farmer's department store is returning to Rangiora. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. A high profile property developer is warning that without permanent central city car parking, businesses will be crippled. Marcus Gibbs reports. Nearly three years on and the Litchfield car park building sits empty. It's been closed since the February 2011 earthquake, but the city council hasn't revealed any plans to reopen the building. From the outside, it doesn't look dangerous. Restart more backs onto it. You can even touch it. Rich Lister Anthony Goff chairs the Central City Business Association. He says without this car park operating, no one will want to invest in the CBD. We need car parking and we need to get our head out of the sand and we need to actually face the reality and get it fixed. The City Council might be biding its time but Anthony sure isn't. The outspoken property developer has found an investor willing to pump $10 million into repairing the building. I've come up with a proposal where I can privately fund the repairs to that car park here and council still own it, they'll own the repairs and the revenue that we should be getting off there, which is not at the moment, will pay for those repairs. It's a no-brainer. He's calling on Christchurch's mayor to release engineering reports into the building. She said oh, I should be able to get those DE reports. The, um, engineering reports, but they haven't arrived on my desk yet. Um, and I said, do I need to issue an official information request? Which I will do. Goff's frustrated over other central city car parks. He's annoyed that after nearly three years, the council has done nothing with the crossing car park. He's also disappointed fellow rich lister Philip Carter's company, Carter Group, has left the crossing retail precinct in such bad shape. It looks terrible. It looks third world. It looks as though it's sort of Bosnia or something like that. Spray paint from search and rescue stains the walls. Inside various products still lie on the ground. They've sat there for three years since the earthquake knocked them off their shelves. It's time for some of these reluctant landlords to actually pull their chip put out and say, I need to get on and help Christchurch rather than go to sleep on it all. But I'd like you to ask Philip Carter why he has not fixed this. What is his problem? It turns out Carter's problem is the same as Goff's, council car parks. Carter Group Chief Executive Mary Devine says the company can't rebuild until the council agrees to fix the crossing car park. And in particular the crossing development is so dependent on the council crossing car park because we fundamentally believe there's no point having a retail precinct if you cannot facilitate public car parking. Devine says the group is close to agreeing on a resolution with the council. She says the rebuild of the car park would take at least 15 months and Carter's retail development won't be ready until that's complete. Goff says the veil of secrecy over plans to rebuild council car parks is scaring off developers. That's why we've got a lot of people not wanting to build around here in the centre city because they say the car parking's not been solved. It's sitting there three years later, still empty. Both Devine and Goff want to see the council car park buildings reopen soon to help bring investors back into the central city. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. The Mayor's press secretary told CTV News Anthony Goff's request for engineering reports into the Litchfield car park building was regarded as a matter of urgency. He said the City Council would send the reports to Goff as soon as they arrived at the Council. Our request to speak to the Mayor was declined. We were advised that she has a very heavy schedule and won't be available. While the Mayor did not have time to speak to CTV News, she did send a personal email to Anthony Goff, claiming his request got lost in the system due to a staff member not being present at the time. The Mayor has promised Mr Goff a new engineering report within the next two to three weeks. The Finance and Expenditure Committee has concerns about the next phase of the earthquake recovery. The Parliamentary Committee is worried the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority doesn't have the necessary expertise. The Finance and Expenditure Committee believes for the next phase of the rebuild, Sarah will have trouble both recruiting and maintaining staff. This as its workload grows before the organisation winds up in April 2016. The Parliamentary Committee is also asking officials to prepare for a post sera environment in just over two years' time. The Earthquake Recovery Minister, Jerry Brownlee, along with Sarah Chief Executive Roger Sutton, acknowledges there will be challenges, but dismisses concerns about the handling of the $40 billion rebuild. 
Minister Brownlee says the concerns voiced by the committee aren't at all unexpected. The Finance and Expenditure Committee's paper on Sarah's 2012-2013 financial review questions the authority's ability to coordinate the recovery's next phase. This will involve avoiding bottlenecks as the rebuild places pressure on the available resources. Labour earthquake spokesperson Ruth Dyson says it's clear Sarah is struggling to find good staff. She says it's a big worry and if we haven't got the right people in Sarah, then we don't have the right people for the job. Chair of the Finance and Expenditure Committee Paul Goldsmith, who's a list MP for National, says Sarah have found more staff and in that area they're making progress. The committee comprises of 11 MPs, six from National, three from Labour, Greens co-leader Dr Russell Norman and New Zealand First leader Winston Peters. Mr Peters says a recent Auditor General report clearly shows there are some problems. He says one would have to be concerned whether or not they're up to speed going into the next phase. Sarah Chief Executive Roger Sutton told the committee it's too early to think about post Sarah, saying a plan will be given come next year's financial review, and he's confident of Sarah's ability to do the job. City Council Finance Committee Chairman Councillor Raf Manji says he won't tolerate rates rising higher than forecast. The councillor says he's adamant ratepayers won't bear any extra financial burden. The council's initial forecast operating deficit for the 2013-2014 financial year was 17.5 million, but now it's looking closer to 27 million in debt by the end of this financial year. But councillor Raf Manji says the rates will stay as forecast. The rise in the council's forecast deficit is partially due to the council being stripped of its accreditation to issue building consents last July. Since then, it's incurred costs that weren't anticipated in 2013's June budget. The council's had to find $8.4 million to cover the Crown Manager's review of its building operations and the increased cost of professional indemnity insurance. Staff have found some savings, but they're still expecting operating deficit to be $9.4 million over budget. They say if the deficit can't be found from operating savings or increased revenue in the next half year, they'll have to look at other options. These include increasing rates for the 2014-2015 financial year by 2.8% over the next year's draft increase of 6.5%. Staff have already reduced the overspend from $13 million at the end of September 2013 down to $9.4 million by December 2013. Councillor Raf Manji says staff must find savings or the council will have to get more out of Christchurch City Holdings. He's strongly against a rates rise. The next stage of the Avon River precinct has started with a goal of restoring the river and bringing wildlife back. Cleaning up a hundred years of sediment and silt, diggers have moved in to start work on the latest stage of the Avon River precinct. Ecologists are recreating habitats for native birds, eels and trout. Shelley McMurtry's hoping once the river's cleaned up, they'll start coming back. In five years' time, I would like to see the Avon River as a shining example of what we can do to return our urban waterways to health. The Avon River precinct spans more than three kilometres through the central city. It's one of the country's largest urban restoration projects, but it comes with a price tag of $96 million. The first stage watermark was built last year, giving Cantabrians a snapshot of what's to come. Designed in six weeks with a two-month build time, Watermark complements the Antigua boat sheds next door. During the river clean-up of Watermark, archaeologists found all sorts of rubbish dumped in the river. Look, we found everything on this job. We've even found the kitchen sink. I think what, what the kitchen sink tells us is a good example of the kind of material that is getting thrown in the river as rubbish. Um, it's clearly from a, a house along the, along the side here, um, just been disposed of. Designs show the river changing to match its surroundings as the paths move downstream. We change character, so sometimes it's quiet and reflective, and the other times it's busy and urban and, and much more sort of urban sophisticated. And then we go into much more quieter areas. So, so we want to match the, the design and the landscape to the character of the town. Work on the street outside Rich Lister Anthony Goff's site will start in the next few months and will include a pathway underneath the nearby Bridge of Remembrance. Planting and landscaping will support bird life while the placement of rocks in the river will provide habitats for fish. Bringing out what the aspiration of, of um, our people was for a green city to restore the ecology that is in the river and really form the backdrop to what we think will be a great central city. Work on the latest stage started yesterday. The idea is to clean the river and remove the silt that blankets the floor. Precinct wide, the river cleaning will cost about $4 million. There's over 100 years worth of sediment, sand and silt that's 
smothered the river. That's not an environment that, that anything in there can, can live with. You know, we didn't like the liquefaction sand in our homes and uh, the, the animals that live in the river don't like it either. Clearing the silt is a critical first step. Diggers will spend the next five months in the water dredging the gravel and silty bottom of the river. The hope is for wildlife to reappear within a year of the work. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. After almost two years of unsettled insurance battles, the farmer's store in Rangiora has good news for local residents. A new store will be built on the existing site. It's been trapped behind a wall of gates on Rangiora's main street. For over two years, locals fought for the return of the farmer's department store. But unsettled insurance disputes has kept its doors closed. But today, Mandeville Properties and Farmer's Chief Financial Officer announced they'll be working together to build a new store on the same site. It will be approximately 5,000 square metres and include up to five specialty shops. The current building suffered damages after the earthquake and the lengthy closure of the store has been blamed for the town centre's slow recovery. Insurance disputes remain unsettled, but the farmers' companies say they want to get things moving for the benefit of everyone. Coming up, we have more 100-day self-assessments from city councillors. Al Jazeera News, international news right off the satellite bringing you up to the minute coverage of world events. Al Jazeera News, weekday mornings at 6 o'clock, right here on CTV. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs for more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Hi, I'm Caitlin, the naturopath here at Staywell Pharmacy. Working with the pharmacist, I use herbal and nutritional medicine to recommend natural alternatives for your health. This can be to counteract any side effects of your medication, general health advice, or natural options for you and your family. I'm also available for consultations. So come in and see us at Staywell Pharmacy. 27 Shand Road, Hornby. Staywell Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Looking for more from your local channel? CTV are online. Our latest listings, on-demand shows, program information, all on the CTV website. We'll see you there. Take Note Ferry Mead is an important part of the local community, providing real personalised service. Locally owned and operated, our store has a New Zealand Post Agency service and lotto, all part of meeting the needs in our local area. Because we're local, we tailor our range and special offers just for you, including a great range of books, stationery, cards, magazines and gift ideas. Take note Ferry Me. Open seven days. Love music? Love summer? Then Ingham Lazy Sundays in the Botanic Gardens Archery Lawn is the place to be. Every Sunday from 3pm through January to February and it's all free. So make Sunday your day to soak up summer and take time to recharge with family and friends relaxing in the beautiful Botanic Gardens. Listen to some great music and enjoy some of the many surrounding attractions. The perfect way to unwind. Ingham Lazy Sundays, putting summer into Sundays. Let's face it, everyone has an agenda. And guess what? So do I. Every week, I'll pick three stories that grab my attention. Agenda with me, Brent Goff. Councillor Phil Clearwater came to council with numerous goals. Patrick Phelps spoke to him about his progress. After serving as a community board member for the Sprayden Heathcote Community Board, Councillor Phil Clearwater has just clocked 100 days in council. He feels a strong sense of achievement, something he puts down to teamwork. And a lot of that clearly uh, is, has been working with other councillors um, and establishing our priorities as a council. Um, so working together, forming a good team, being part of that. 
Mr Clearwater says the council finances and its debt aren't his areas, but he believes staff are on track to sort the books. I think we're handling it very well. We're getting very good information from staff, um, and our, I'm not in the financial committee, but our financial committee are looking at that very hard. We're able to go along to those meetings too, and, and we're seeing those figures. So fairly soon it'll be a very, very clear um, budget sheet. And what does he think he's brought to the table? I think um, my skills of being able to work with other people, being able to work well with staff, um, I think uh, at at attending the um, Transport Operations Centre opening of the real-time dig dig digital uh, information that's, uh, that was out at Templeton um, and that we've got, we've got three or four of those already in around the city, uh, will help address one of your most serious problems of traffic congestion. Easing congestion was one of the Spraydon Heathcote councillor's election goals, and he says that issue won't go away overnight. In the meantime, however, some planning from motorists will go a long way. But I think one of the things too is and for people and all of us being able to uh, and prepared to plan our, our transport routes and to do that looking at the information that is available and it's, um, it's being advertised in the press about, for example and, and other media, I think CTV too, just what, what are the best, which routes are closed right now and, and, how, and, and do I need to change my uh, uh, driving pattern home uh, for either today or maybe the next week. Another key issue on which Mr Clearwater campaigned was forging a stronger relationship between the City Council and the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority, specifically to improve housing quality. We've already got um, housing developments, up, for example, up in the southwest part of the city. Um, and, and Sarah have been involved in that planning. And, and I guess um, I know that our, our council staff are working very well with Sarah. As a Spraydon Heathcote councillor, one of his main goals has been maintaining pure water supply and restoring the Heathcote River. Uh, we're working very well with ECAN to, um, to look at how in fact we can afford to, um, to put in uh, improved, um, improved resources I guess by way of retention basins. Mr Clearwater says keeping the water clear is something with which we can all help. For example, um, my cleaning of my car, making sure that in fact I'm not cleaning it anywhere near the, the, the main, the main, any, any main street or, any, or even on any street. So that's what's been going well for Mr Clearwater's first 100 days. And the room for improvement? Well, he thinks there could be better communication between locals and the council in some areas. The change of transport routes that people need to make. That we have got some neat cycleways underway. Um, letting people know that there are alternatives as to how we, we, we run our city and how, and how people can play their part in that. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. Patrick Phelps also spoke to Councillor David East to see what his thoughts are on his term so far. Councillor David East spent nine years as a community board member before his first term on the City Council. He says the Council's first hundred days have been far from quiet. It's been uh, a very busy and, and very frantic time. We've had numerous briefings on a whole range of subjects, so it's, it's been quite... quite um, uh, a mind-filling exercise for the last three months. Mr Reese is getting everyone up to speed on the issues is an important step. The financial position of council, uh, where things are at with the rebuild, uh, our relationships with Sierra and, and a number of other organisations. The Burwood Pegasus councillor is very positive about the council's relationship with Sierra. We've been trying to sort of work on a, uh, on a more collaborative, cooperative approach and I think it's working very well at the moment and we are finding with our other agencies, particularly ECAN and CERA, that we are developing a new relationship and, and moving towards uh, better, better working relationships, better cooperation and, and I think you, know, you can see that in the city at the moment. And with regard to the council's internal relationship? And I suppose we've adopted the mantra early, early on that you know one council working together with integrity and passion, and, and to date it's been working pretty well. Um, no doubt, you know there there will be some differences and in, in points of view, but uh, so far we've been working very cohesively. At a grassroots level. Mr East says there are some areas in his own ward he hopes to address. There's probably a couple of uh, key areas that have been worked on at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of debate on pressure sewer systems, particularly in the Parklands area, and we're working through a consultation process at the moment to uh, resolve those issues. 
The councillor hopes to get out into the community over the next few weeks with staff to present the damage so everyone understands the issues. Mr East says a large focus for his constituents is the replacement of the QE2 sports complex and recreational facilities. So there is uh, a fair amount of uh, consultation and uh, work on looking at the preferred site for a replacement swimming facility. Obviously I've been heavily involved in promoting aquatic facilities in and around the New Brighton area and so that's still a key focus for me. Looking ahead, Councillor David East says we need to deal with the influx of people coming into the city. We've got a lot of people coming into the city, tradesmen particularly, housing those people and finding affordable places for those sort of people to go is probably a big issue for us in the short term. Mr East says one of the big issues in the future will be dealing with consents. There's a lot of uh, ongoing work in the reaccreditation of our building consents programme. Um, and there are a few issues that need to also be resolved with uh, resource consenting as well. So that's probably going to be my main uh, focus uh, in, in terms of a city-wide. And Mr East says he's confident staff can deal with the coming demand for building consents. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. Children are back to school this week and the Christchurch police are making sure they're crossing the roads safely. Safe start to the school day. Road Patrol students at Wollstone Primary are helping children make their way into the school grounds safely. Signs out! Check! Pupils have to cross Ferry Road to make their way to class. In peak hour traffic, it can be dangerous for pedestrians. The help of students on Road Patrol means they can avoid any major incidents. They will, like, if they do it on their own, people might not stop when they're walking past and they might get hit and hurt badly. The police were on hand this morning to help out the pupils. As part of their back to school campaign, they're spending the first two weeks of the school year visiting primary and intermediate schools across the city. This is always a problem, no matter what the road's like or what's on the road, it's about people being aware keeping their eyes open, looking out for children. With school pick-up and drop-offs a busy time of the day, avoiding the busy roads can be simple. It's really interesting, the drivers who, are, um, who cause us most problems, believe it or not, are the parents. Because, there, I mean, there's no congestion here before school and then there's plenty. So my suggestion to parents would be, why don't you just park 800 metres away and walk? Christchurch Police sent a strong message about how to keep the roads around the school safe. When one sign on a school patrol is out, they must stop just for that one sign. It, it doesn't matter if there's not two of them out, you have to stop. Any signs, please stop. Over 146 crashes happened within 100 metres of Christchurch schools. Keeping an eye out for kids crossing will keep the roads safer. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Still to come, the roading update and your regional weather. Join us tonight at 6 for DW World News. Informative, lively, international news, breaking stories and global developments. DW News, weekdays at 6pm, right here on CTV. Avoid the cowboys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. The Pawn Shop is buying gold now. Got a half broken necklace? The Pawn Shop will buy it. All the earrings you haven't worn in years? The Pawn Shop will buy them too. The Pawn Shop will buy anything gold. Beautiful, broken, treasure or trash, the Pawn Shop will give you cash on the spot. Come along to the Pawn Shop to view our huge range of new and used jewellery. Everything's as good as gold at the Pawn Shop. 77 Ferry Road and 396 Blenheim Road. Is this your year to upgrade your existing interior? Then head into Bathroom and Flooring Warehouse for the latest styles in European vanities, showers and baths, all at affordable prices. Bathroom and Flooring Warehouse also stock a large selection of carpets and vinyl for all your flooring needs. To view our full range, head into 159 Waterloo Road, Hornby 
or visit bathroomandflooring.co.nz. Just 20 minutes drive from Christchurch and nestled in the tranquil surroundings of Littleton Harbour is Canterbury's best kept treasure, Living Springs. The perfect setting for large or small conference groups, team building and development, weddings and special events. With accommodation and catering options available, our facilities and recreational activities are ideal for any occasion. Enjoy the breathtaking scenery and leave feeling revitalised. In Focus, captivating, informative, in-depth documentaries. Be informed and learn something new. In Focus, weekdays at 9am. Here's CTV's new roading update to assist drivers navigate the repairs taking place across the CBD. Hello Christchurch, to help you plan your journey around the central city, here's an update on major roadworks within the four avenues. These works may cause delays, particularly in peak hours. When travelling along Morehouse Ave and approaching Fitzgerald, traffic's reduced to one lane. Fitzgerald Ave is also down to one lane between Morehouse Ave and Ferry Road, so you won't be able to turn right from Morehouse. There's also no entry from Fallsgrave Street. Be aware St Asif Street between Fitzgerald Ave and Barbados Street has lane reductions. These works will cause some delays during peak hours and road users should consider using Madras and Manchester Streets as alternative routes when heading north. I'll be back tomorrow with another update. In the meantime, visit the Transport for Christchurch website. And the website does have lots of useful information. And finally tonight, your regional weather. An anti-cyclone is pushing a southeasterly airflow into Canterbury today. Kaikoura, low cloud clearing and sunny periods increasing during the day, with nor'easterly winds developing. Tonight's low 11, tomorrow's high 21. Hamna, mostly fine and sunny with light winds. Tonight's low of 8, and tomorrow's high of 24. Rangi order in Kayapoi, cloudy at first but lots of sunshine later on with nor'easterly winds. Tonight's low of 11 and tomorrow's high of 21. Christchurch, a fine and pleasant Thursday ahead with sunshine in the afternoon and nor'easterly winds. Tonight's low, 11, tomorrow's high of 21. Burton, some low cloud at first, but mostly fine and sunny during the day, with southeasterlies dying out and nor'easterlies developing. Tonight's low of 11 and tomorrow's high of 21. Timaru, low cloud clearing and sunny periods increasing during the day, with nor'easterly winds developing. Tonight's low of 11 and tomorrow's high 21. Looking ahead for Canterbury, mostly fine and sunny with moderate nor'easterlies Friday and Saturday, a risk of afternoon showers inland. That's all for now, have a good Waitangi day and good evening. And that is CTV News. I'm Grant Mangan. Do have a great Waitangi day. Good night.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.